Wars on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are back with part three of the Transformers trading card game FAQ. You see, there was actually a lot in the FAQ. In the first video, we went through the categories of characters. Think combiners along the lines of Omega Supreme. In the second video, we focused on all of them. There are lovely battle cards. Things like even the score, for instance. So today, we've got some character FAQs that we need to take a little bit of a look about. And hopefully this is going to be a little bit shorter than the last one, which clocked in at over half an hour. But I don't want to just read the rules to you. I want to explain them and give you examples. So unfortunately, eh, I'd say unfortunately, I enjoy these. And hopefully, I'm bringing a little bit of entertainment as well. So looking at the character cards then, what about Captain Astro Train? And what is special about Captain Astro Train is that you've got different skills depending on the amount of upgrades that you have attached. Well, each of the skills require a certain number of upgrades. What happens if the ability triggers, but then your upgrades are scrapped during the attack? Doesn't matter. The second the attack starts, the ability has triggered. Even if you then lose the upgrades, you've still got the ability. The ability is still triggered, so you're off the hook. Captain Jetfire. When you flip it into alt mode, you reveal the top five cards of your deck. Put all the upgrades from among them into your hand and scrap the rest. Well, what if you've got fewer than five cards in your deck when you flip Captain Jetfire to alt mode? And the answer is, you reveal as many as you can, then you put them to one side, shuffle your scrap pile to remake your deck, and then keep revealing until you've revealed five. So if you've got three in your deck, you reveal three, put them to one side, shuffle your scrap pile, it becomes your deck, reveal two, there are your five. Remember the rule in the Transformers trading card game? The moment that you have no cards left in your deck, you immediately shuffle your scrap pile, and it becomes your deck. Lockdown is a mercenary, and because it's a mercenary, that means it has a bounty skill, which is a skill that comes in when you do enough attack damage to KO a character. And the bounty skill here is that you put the bottom card of your deck face down under it. And then in alt mode, you get plus two attack for each card under it. And when you flip to this mode, you draw a card for each card under this and each upgrade he has. Then scrap that many cards from your hand. So the bounty skill is pretty important. Well, what does it mean when a card is under lockdown? And exactly that. The cards under lockdown are hidden under lockdown physically under it. They are out of play. They are not considered on the battlefield, even though they physically are on the battlefield. None of their abilities, nothing works, nothing applies. It's like they're not even there. If it's an upgrade, that upgrade is not on lockdown. It is hidden underneath lockdown. But they're not in your scrap pile, so when your deck runs out, you don't shuffle them back into your scrap pile. They are essentially just markers telling you what to do in terms of your alt mode skills. Can you look at the card as it is put under lockdown? No! Definitely not. Face down basically means secret, don't be peeking, that's cheeky. What happens to the cards under lockdown if he is KO'd? They are put into your scrap pile. Not the KO area, the scrap pile. Because at that point, they're not doing what they were doing, so they essentially just become scrapped cards. Lord Megatron. We like Lord Megatron. Lord Megatron in alt mode. When you flip to this mode, your opponent scraps a number of cards from the top of their deck equal to this character's attack total. Well, what happens if your attack is higher than the number of cards remaining in your opponent's deck? Your opponent scraps all the cards in their deck. Then they set those cards aside, shuffle all the other cards from the scrap pile into their deck, and then keep scrapping until they've scrapped enough cards. Cool. In most cases, however many cards they were supposed to scrap will be the number of cards in the scrap pile after Megatron's ability is finished. Sorry, after Lord Megatron's ability is finished. <laughs> so, point here is that when you scrap, 
If your opponent has to reshuffle mid-ability, they do not shuffle the newly scrapped cards back in. The scrapped cards are set aside. If you scrap six cards and your opponent reshuffles in the middle, they should have six cards in the scrap pile when the ability is resolved. What happens if your opponent's deck just runs out of cards? Well, if there are no cards in the scrap pile, they can't reshuffle their deck, so the ability doesn't trigger. Got it. Sergeant Six Gun. He's one of the, the new weaponizers in the game. And in bot mode, it's got a really nice ability whereby you may scrap a weapon from your hand that has plus attack in the stat box and you get that much plus attack. So, for instance, if you scrap a grenade launcher, you would get plus four attack until end of turn because grenade launcher has a plus four in the attack box. Well, what happens if it gives you extra attack in the text box? No, because it says on the card, if it is in the stat box, and that is different from the text box. Cool. MXT S2A Guided Missile Launcher, one of the upgrades into which Sergeant Six Gun turns when KO'd. It gives you plus free attack and can go into an armor or utility slot. When you play it, do you have to say which slot it's in? Yes. Now, I know a lot of people don't always do this, but there are actually specific places around the card where the weapon, utility, armor, etc. are placed. And as a player, can I please implore you to try and put them in the right one? Because otherwise, a card like this gets super confusing because your opponent thinks, oh, it's in the armor slot. My opponent can't play an armor without scrapping the weapon, which I don't think they're going to do. Oh, wait, that was in the utility slot. Now they've played an armor and kept the weapon in the armor slot, which is actually the utility slot. It gets kind of annoying. What is very important is once it's in a slot, it cannot be moved. So if you put it in the armor slot, it is in the armor slot. You cannot then move it to the utility slot. Well, if you put a weapon in an armor slot, does that make it an armor? No, still a weapon. Just so happens to be a weapon in an armor slot private fix it we like private fix it he's got a very nice little skill you scrap a white icon card from your hand and then each player scraps their hand and draws four cards what happens if a player has fewer than four cards in your hand when this tap ability is used each player draws four cards no matter how many cards they scrapped that is to say that if you use this with fewer than four cards in hand, you'll have more at the end than you started with. Private Hot Rod, my personal number one card in the set. What does reshuffle your deck mean? So you've got a lovely skill in alt mode. When you reshuffle your deck and you don't have a battle card under you, put the bottom card of your deck face down under him. Reshuffling your deck is when you shuffle your scrap pile into your deck because your deck is empty. If you shuffle your deck for another reason, that's not reshuffling your deck, that's just shuffling your deck. Let's say you played a treasure hunt, for instance, you wouldn't be able to play treasure hunt and go, oh, I'm shuffling my deck. No, that, that doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Hot Rod's ability puts a card from the bottom of your deck under himself. What does that mean? Same as we talked about a moment ago. It's just out of the game. It's not an upgrade. It's nothing. It's just out of the game. And if Hot Rod gets KO'd, it goes to your scrap pile. Lovely. When you're in bot mode, you don't actually do anything. Except you need to know if there is a battle card under him. So then you can play an extra action. It's basically relevant for that. Private Sea Watch, the very first ever boat in the Transformers trading card game has got a lovely little skill whereby when one of your rescue patrols battles and you flip at least two white icons, you flip three more battle cards. Well, if I flip two white icons and the three additional battle cards have two more white icons, do I flip three more battle cards again? No, it's a single use ability. It says when you attack and flip at least two white icons, meaning you can flip a whole bunch more, you're still only flipping three more battle cards. 
Private Sidetrack has a tap skill that lets you scrap an orange icon card from your hand, scrap the top four cards of your deck, and pull all upgrade scrap this way into your hand, i.e. it's totally treasure hunt. What if you've got fewer than four cards in your deck? Well, you scrap all the cards in your deck, then setting those cards aside, you shuffle the other cards in your scrap pile into your deck, and then keep scrapping until you hit four. Same ruling we've seen a couple of times. If you run out of your cards mid-ability, you set aside any cards you've already taken from the deck, reshuffle your scrap pile into your deck, and then keep going. Cool. Private Turbo Board. I love Private Turbo Board because it limits your opponent to only being able to play two cards during their turn. So what happens if they played a secret action? Does that count as one of the two cards they played? Yes. Because you still play it. Now, if you reveal a secret action during your turn, that does not count as playing a card. But if you play it down, you're playing a card. It totally counts. Private Vanguard. The first armor we ever saw as a battle master. Now, it's got an ability whereby when one of your other characters defends and you flip at least one white icon, that character cannot take more than five attack damage during this battle. What happens with stuff like Blast Suit? Now, we looked at this in the previous video, but essentially, it doesn't do anything in terms of the amount of damage being done. So, if we look at Blast Shield, it basically says that the amount of damage you would take is halved and rounded down and that's how much you take well here you basically sit out while all the damage modifiers are going on you just sit there you do nothing and then when the final amount of damage is calculated as it's being applied you go actually mate sorry five damage maximum there we go raider caliburst now this has got a lovely skill when your opponent draws a card if they've already drawn a card this turn your opponent chooses one of their characters and does damage to it. So, if your opponent plays Pep Talk, which is just a card that lets you draw two cards, what actually happens? Well, assuming that they've already drawn a card, which they should have done at the beginning of their turn, they, two separate times, choose a character and do one damage to it. Cool. I mean, cool for you, but less good for them. They would, however, be able to choose the same character twice, or they would be able to take one damage on one character and the second damage on another. Sergeant Barricade is another one of these cards we're getting in Wave 4. Sergeant Barricade comes along, and in bot mode, it's got a rather lovely skill, whereby when you battle and there's no cards under you, after the battle, put one of the flip battle cards with no battle icons under him. And then when you flip to alt mode, you may play a battle card from under him. And again, we've got the same ruling in terms of cards under him. Cards under him do nothing, are not counted as in the game. They're not in your scrap pile. If it's an upgrade, it doesn't actually do anything. It is essentially there as a marker. And then when you flip into alt mode, then you can play it and do something. Happens weirdly often in Wave 4. Sergeant Mirage, when you flip to alt mode, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a blue icon card, you draw two cards. Otherwise, you draw one. Okay. Is the card you reveal the first card you draw? Yes. Essentially, you reveal a card and draw it. If it is a blue icon card, you draw a second, which, of course you don't then have to reveal. Cool. Speaking of Sergeant Mirage, in bot mode, when you got a face down or face up secret action, you get tough too. Well, several cards in the set put battle cards under characters on the battlefield. Does this give you tough too? You know the answer at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is no. Cards under a character don't do anything. <sighs> there we go. And finally, Sergeant Springer. In bot mode, got a very lovely skill, whereby if you've got seven or more cards in hand, and you flip into bot mode, you may play an action and an upgrade. Well, if you've got exactly seven cards in hand, the ability triggers, you play an action, now you've got six cards in hand, 
Do you still get to play an upgrade? And the answer is yes. When you flip into bot mode, you check, do I have seven cards in hand? If the answer is yes, then the ability fires and you're good. You don't recheck halfway through the ability. And there we go. Three videos later, that is the way for FAQ. And if my calculations are correct, we're looking at somewhere in the region of an hour and ten minutes to go through them. But at least we were thorough, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we hit everything quite nicely. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the FAQs. I'd like to know what you think about these. Let me know in terms of which ones you're excited about, which ones look good, etc. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Transformers and all kinds of other games. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can get weekly bonus podcasts, tell me what videos to make, support the channel, all kinds of good stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.